The next one is associations analysis, or market basket analysis, sequence analysis, goes under a range of different names. I'm seeing quite a few knobs in the audience, so I'm probably telling you things that you already know, for which I apologize. But market basket analysis is about saying, well, if I put something in the basket, what am I next most likely to put in to the basket? It's a virtual basket. It drives questions like the top five recommendations for you based on what you previously bought. It drives questions like, and you probably see the question, do you get Amazon in Romania? Yeah, okay. People, brackets like you, they don't actually say like you, but if they're intelligent, they will do the like you bit. People like you who bought the whatever it was will also buy this. And they also do things like frequently bought items together. It is a very product oriented thing, but when you do do the like you bit, you do put a customer overlay on top of it. So here is a screen. This is my wife going on to Amazon, so I'll quickly describe what my wife's been recommended. Learn to dance salsa. Standards and ethics for counselling in something or other. It's slightly bizarre so far, but it's on the art side, really. The interpretation of dreams, very much into the arts at the moment. GCSE physics, yeah, okay, bit of a shift to the right there. And a weekend in the city, which is um, an album by the block party. Anybody familiar with block party? It's um, in the rock band thing, not something that my wife would actually like. You might have guessed that's my son coming in here at this point under my wife's name and under my wife's credit card. But how do Amazon do this? It's actually quite simple. If you drill in and say, there's, there's a thing on here that says, why do we recommend this? And, and the reason why they recommended a weekend in the city by block party is because she previously bought Our Earth and Pleasures, which I think is a Maximo Park album. Again, you won't have heard of it, it's all pretty drop music. But it's a very simple. She bought A, so she will buy B. And that's the most obvious one to do. I'll explain how that works in a moment. Here's another one. You recognise this? iTunes? You get iTunes and things? Yeah? Um, so this is, this is my iTunes catalogue. Down the right of recent versions of iTunes, don't know whether you, you know this, they, they've got this genius thing going on. Again, it is an associations analysis type of device that's driving that. And so I'm actually on a particular one, playing a particular one, and these are things that either musically are similar or are the ones that people will have bought once they've bought this other one. And again, iTunes and Amazon, two great examples of organisations, sophisticated organisations, that use association analysis to drive next best offer. One of the things, one of the key features behind these two is that they both have a huge catalogue of things to do and that's what makes it a little bit harder for them. For a banking organisation or a telco organisation, this is actually oversimplistic. But what we can do in those organisations, those types of industries, is because the product catalogue is less, less huge, you can then bring in the sequence as well as A means B, you start moving to A, followed by B, followed by C, now means D. At the end of the day, the technique is an analytical approach that results in an end product, which is a great big cross-reference table, which then is what the Amazon site or the Google site is referring back to. So, just to give a little bit of flesh on the bones here, uh, as is the Kaiser Chiefs, as is the Coops, as is Maximo Park, um, Johann Sebastian Bach, slightly different, yeah? Okay, what actually happens here is for every hundred purchases of Arctic Monkeys, there are 74 of Kaiser Chiefs, 39 of Coops, and so on and so forth. So, if you were to take a bunch of these two products, what would the expected count, which is essentially a multiplication of those up, factored down by percentages, what would that come out at? 
you'd expect for every person buying Arctic monkeys, you would expect 7.4 cars you'd expect 8.3 yards plus two darks. But in practice, somebody buying Arctic monkeys, they're unlikely to buy quite as many yards of dust in barks. So in actual fact, the count in reality is seven as opposed to 18, which drives this thing called the lift. And that is the thing that enables you to choose what is the next best offer for anybody buying Arctic monkeys, which is cars and And vice versa. Now, of course, clever organizations will factor that by the margin they make on each of those. So you will get an enhanced version of that, which drives you money, as well as just makes it the most relevant for your customer. And there is a blend. It's an optimization blend.